Compound Blur is found under the Blur and Sharpen category, and this is a really powerful blur effect because it allows you to blur different parts of the image at different levels. So I'm actually gonna make a new adjustment layer by going up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and I'll call this Blur, and apply Compound Blur to it. By default, it looks pretty much like a standard blur, but it has some weird artifacting, and that's because it's basing the blur off of a blur layer, which it's set to default, the layer that you applied it to, which in this case is the adjustment layer that After Effects is just reading as what's in the comp. But I wanna make my own blur layer. So I'm gonna go up to layer, new, solid, and I'll call this blur map. Make sure it's the comp size and click okay, and then apply a gradient ramp to it. Now I can just shut that layer's visibility off and choose that as my blur layer in the compound blur effect. I need to make sure to choose effects and masks, otherwise it won't pay attention to any of the effects that I applied to that map layer. But just like that, the top of my layer is not as blurred as the bottom. So what's happening is that it's taking the darker parts of my blur map and applying less of a blur to them than the parts that have brighter pixels. So if I were to grab my gradient ramp points, I could shape this blur just by moving those two points. Remember the black pixels are on the left side, the white pixels are on the right side. So the brighter the pixels, the more extreme the blur. So I could split this right down the middle and have half of my logo blurred out and half of it not. So let's look at the controls that we actually have access to. There's not really a lot. We have maximum blur, and that is going to be the blur amount for the pixels that are 100% black, meaning nothing can be blurred more than this value of 24. But then it's linearly interpolated from that 24 down to zero pixels blurred on the black part of the map. We have a checkbox for if layer sizes differ to stretch the map to fit. My map is the exact same size as my layer, so it doesn't need to do any stretching. But if you were using a layer that was different, you could do that to stretch it to the size of the layer you're applying it to. And then we have a checkbox to invert the blur, swapping the color values, meaning the black pixels are now blurriest and white is not blurry at all. Now, why is this effect useful at all? Well, for one, you can't do this type of blurring with a standard blur effect. If I were to shut this off for a second and add, say, a fast box blur, and just blurred it out a little bit, and then went and grabbed maybe just a rectangle mask, drew it right over the half of my logo. I'll go into that fast box blur and turn on the compositing options so that it uses that mask as a mat for that blur. Now just the left side of my logo is blurred, but if I want that to be transitioned from the blurry area to the non-blurry area, I can't just press F to bring up the mask feathering and feather out the X property. That is transitioning from blurry to non-blurry, but it's not actually blurring things less. It's really just fading the transparency between the two. So let me take a snapshot of that, turn the fast box blur off and compound blur back on, and align my gradient ramp to fit kind of where that mask was a little bit better. And this is the difference if I show before and after it's actually blurring the pixels more or less based on that map rather than just fading it out. So where this gets really interesting, if I get rid of the mask, the fast box blur, is changing up what your blur map is actually made up of. Instead of using a gradient ramp, I'm gonna add, say, a fractal noise and just leave it at its default settings and now zoom in and see that we're getting this kind of textured blur over our entire image. So I'll go to the compound blur and turn that value up and down to show you that that texture is showing through with the way that it's actually blurring out. And maybe I wanna change the fractal noise. I could increase the contrast so it's a little bit more noticeable. Maybe scale it up a little bit by going into the transform controls and just increasing it. And now I have areas of my image that are nice and clear and others that are very blurred out. So if I keyframe this brightness property, maybe I'll back it up to where everything is very blurred. Set a keyframe right there and then go forward maybe two seconds and turn the brightness value way up. Now my map is 100% white and my layer is completely clear. I can just easy ease these keyframes and play it back and I have this kind of organic looking reveal of my logo where that blur is gradually getting less and less, but it's textured. I could also just stop it right there, take off the keyframes and then animate the offset of that fractal noise. If I go to the offset turbulence and set a keyframe there, press U to bring that keyframe up and then just shift it upwards, then it's almost going to look like heat distortion that's being applied over my logo. I'm gonna make that even a little bit more dramatic as well as animate the evolution. If I press U again with that keyframe added, 
set it back here, and then just change the evolution a lot. Now it's not only moving upwards, but also animating a little bit more randomly. This looks a lot more convincingly like heat distortion. There are many, many applications and uses for this effect. Another one would be to make a faux tilt shift effect or adding in depth of field. If I made my logo a little bit smaller and I changed my blur map back to being a gradient ramp, but this time just resetting it to its default, and then I'll add a colorama effect right after it and change the output cycle to the preset of solarize gray. So we now go from black to white to black again. I'll turn that blur maps visibility off again. And now we're blurry at the top and bottom of the frame, but nice and crisp in focus in the center of the frame. I could maybe turn this layer 3D and rotate it a little bit so it looks like it actually has some camera perspective to it. And I've created this faux tilt shift effect very easily. Maybe I wanna increase that blurriness a little bit. I could zoom in here so I can see it more closely and adjust the colorama effect. I could expand that out just by adding another white color swatch by pressing Control or Command and clicking and dragging on this and expanding the white portion just so that that white gradient expands out further from the center. That'll keep more of my logo in focus. And to fix these blurry edges around the outside, they're actually producing some semi-transparent pixels. For this particular scene, all I would have to do is add a solid composite effect that will fill in all of the alpha transparency, sample that green color, and it's gonna fill it out. Obviously, this wouldn't work if you were using anything but a solid background, but in that instance, what you could do is instead of a solid composite, just add a transform effect right after the compound blur and scale everything up just far enough to where you don't see those edges anymore. Now that will be a loss of quality. So another solution would be to just work at a higher comp size. So I could just increase my 1920 by 1080 to maybe 2200. And then I would need to make sure that all of my solids are also the same size, including my hidden background here. But now this comp is larger than it needs to be. So I could then drag that into a new comp and crop this back down to 1920 by 1080. It's a little bit of an annoying workaround, but that does solve the problem of those semi-transparent edges. It's a very simple and straightforward effect, but it has lots of use cases and it's definitely worth knowing about. That's everything you need to know about Compound Blur. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.